Hi, I'm Mike Thompson. In this video, I'm going to show you five quick projects that I did that I simply didn't film at the time or weren't worthy of their own video. This one is number four. Number one, the wall mounted burner. When we took our stove apart, I had a lot of parts left over. And so I raided this parts box for a burner and made this. Now, out in the shop, I can have hot chocolate or coffee or whatever in the morning. Or, yeah, this is great. This is 26 gauge galvanized sheet metal. Now, I wasn't able to bend it all at once because my brake wasn't big enough. So I had to rivet the sides back on after the fact. But it folds up just like so. And you can see it's very simple. I used one of the old burner controllers here through the front face, screwed down, and just a couple of the wires that were left over. This slot here holds the burner in place, and there's a little clip riveted to the front to hold it. And it flips just down like so. Pretty nifty. And on a cold morning, it's nice to have a hot cup of joe, or hot chocolate, or whatever. Number two, some table saw upgrades. This is the Bosch 4100D. It definitely lacks some table space, and so I'm installing these extra wings that fold out. And they do supply you with a five millimeter Allen wrench that fits this gap, I guess. Get everything here aligned. Get it finger tight. This flat here on the short front rod has to be in line with that little screw hole so that I can tighten my thumb screw down and lock this rod in place. So now I've got to make sure that this wing is flush here with this piece of wood. Excellent. And then tighten it the rest of the way here. got these in the brackets. I've got the front and back eclipse in place so that this has travel limits there and there. Well, that's pretty awesome. Cool. Now, let me check something. All right, that'll work. Now, this outfeed is slightly beneath the level of the table, but when I say slightly, I'm a sixteenth of an inch on that side, and this side is maybe three thirty seconds so it's right there and that's that's going to be fine enough because by the time whenever i'm cutting that's big enough to need this it gets there that's not going to be any issue uh, i would like it to of course be totally flush but this is going to be just fine and this has a nice kind of you know curved edge here and almost even a ramp so that if something does tend to kind of dive off the edge it should come back up and it'll catch it and send it on its way well that's a lot better I still can't quite cut a full piece of Baltic birch plywood entirely, but these things help an awful lot. I definitely recommend these things and they're, they're worth their weight in aluminum. Number three, hard drive dismantling. I've got a bunch of hard drives here that I've collected over the years and time to take them apart because I'm hopefully gonna build that death ray finally. And here's the platter that I want. Most hard drives have at least two, but we'll see. There's always a hidden screw here somewhere under the sticker, and the, you gotta poke around to find it. Up just like so. Then once you remove the perimeter screws and the one hidden screw, sometimes there's two, you can pop this open, and there it is. Look at that. So now what's awesome about this, other than being the best mirror I've ever seen in my life, is that we're actually gonna get a few free bearings out of this and some magnets. And those are the parts we want. And this casing is actually aluminum, which you know I want because I'm gonna melt it down. So I'm basically gonna use almost all of this except the reed right head. And then a whole bunch of screws. These are all Torx. They're very, very small Torx. So make sure you have a small set. This is from my precision screwdriver set. And now I actually unscrew the platter here. I gotta use my thumb as a stop, so otherwise this thing's just gonna rotate as I try to unscrew it. There's six screws here. All right, that ring might be useful, I'll save that. Little rings. Pull off this spacer, that's a nice piece of aluminum. Rings. And take the platter out. Now there's only one, darn. But isn't that good looking? 
I just love the, the color depth. It's such a rich color. Now these are typically made out of aluminum and then they've obviously been coated, but uh, I'm not gonna melt these down, at least not all of them. You, you guys know what I'm gonna do with these, so I'm gonna keep going. I've got uh, a dozen or uh, eight of these, eight, eight three and a half inch drives, and then I've got several two and a half inch drives that we're gonna do. And then I'll use some of these for various projects. Obviously the cases are getting melted down because uh, they're aluminum. Their bearings are getting saved and the platters are going to be used for possibly nefarious purposes. And so let's get keep going. So you need a set of punches, obviously. This is just the eight piece pin punch set from Harbor Freight. Works just fine for this and other things. Sorry about the video shaking. So here you can see the coils. This is an outrunner motor. Oh, that's been magnetized. And then inside here is the bearings and the little thing here. So we'll save this as an entire unit for now. Uh, then obviously I need to get these out of here because I don't want the this melt because they're, it's a la steel laminate or iron. It's a steel laminate with uh, copper windings. And so I don't want that in my melt. So I need to pry that out too. Use a bigger punch for this one to distribute the load better. And give it a couple taps. Now the body of this appears to be aluminum, but I'm not gonna save that aluminum. And there's that bearing right there. And here's what became of all my hard drive cases. Nice liquid aluminum. Perfect, look at that. Number four, the magnetic knife holder. This is four pieces of half inch Baltic birch cut out so that it can hold this Harbor Freight magnetic tool holder, just like so. And now I made this by taking a piece of plywood and then bandsawing it out like so, so that this front edge is about a 32nd of an inch thick, very, very, very thin. And then of course came out like so, and then came back and squared off these corners in two other cuts. So it ends up looking like this. I'm sorry I didn't film this at the time, but you know, that's kind of the point of this. I made two of these and then sandwiched these two between two that I didn't cut. And so it looked, you know, like that in the middle. It's much easier than like hollowing it out. And so I lay my magnet in there and then put the piece of Velcro, sticky back of course, on top of that magnet. And then I'll put the mating piece on the other side Not too bad. Okay. Oh, nope. Oh, there we go. Now I'll lay this out here like so. And now I'll be able to stick it on the wall and get it positioned just right. And this sticks out just a little bit. So let me get it kind of where I want it here. It's not going to be enough. I'm going to have to obviously pull this back off, but let me push it right up there like so. Okay. That should be good for an initial. It's nice and level. That's a pretty good initial tack. I'll pull this back off so I can get that stuck down. Okay, now I can really push it on there. And of course, since it's just Velcro, it's not permanent at all. And I can easily take this back off later if I need to. I'm a big fan of non-permanence. Although I have been married 12 years, so I guess that doesn't always apply. And put this back on top. Perfect. And now I can stick my knives. Look at that. And there's a set of scissors that go somewhere. I, I don't know where they are at the moment. Number five, the pocket chocks. So these wooden chocks weigh 1.34 pounds. Now that's not much, but when you're flying near gross weight, every ounce counts. And so some 3D printed little snazzy things like this solve the problem. These only weigh a couple ounces total for both of them. So they fold up just like so. You can see it's got notches here for all the hinge pins so that they can clear. And they unfold just like this, boop. And they slip in, boop, just like that. No, they don't actually make sounds. And it does the job. And we all had an awful lot of fun, especially the boys, because it was their first time. But hopefully this inspires you guys and gives you some ideas about ways you could maybe solve your own problems. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm Mike Thompson, and thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.